Well, as early as the first date, we navigate money when we decide whether or not to split the bill. Yet some of us are guilty of avoiding one of the most important discussions we should have with our partner, the thorny issue of joint finances. Yeah, creating a method for managing our money is crucial in a committed relationship. So how do we find financial security with our partner and how can we maintain this across all stages of our life? For more, we're joined by financial advisor and author Helen Baker in Brisbane. Good morning to you, Helen. Hey. Morning. Now, merging finances with a partner can be challenging, especially the second time around. What do couples need to consider before they make the move? Yeah, so very common now to be second time around, but rarely are both parties in the exact same position. So there's risk of what we call sexually transmitted debt, which can mean somebody starts to take on uh, mobile phone plans or some loans or so on because the other person has bad credit ratings so we want to try and protect people from doing that but big picture and long term you have to think about things like Centrelink or buying the house together so very often we get ch people who have ki children from former relationships and if something happens to them they want to ensure that their wealth is going to their children but if they buy a house with their new partner as joint tenants then it will pass over to the other partner if they do it as tenants in common it will go to their will and so making sure that you've got the right insurances in place the superannuation nominations are correct the wills correct so that we make sure people are not left on the street if they have to be you know, turfed out of their house because it went to the kids and they want to sell the house. So mm. a lot of planning. And Centrelink is another one where perhaps somebody has a lot and the other person has very little and their expectation is they're going to pick up some aged pension. But because they're viewed together, even though they might keep their finances separate, Centrelink views them as one whole uh, couple and therefore can mean the other person doesn't get any age pension whatsoever mm. and then they've got issues about how do they sustain themselves. Mm. So there's a lot to plan yeah, for. Yeah, a lot to consider yeah, there, so yeah. Much. With a soaring cost of living, pooling in with family on investments may seem like a, a reasonable financial decision. Uh, does this work for everyone? We, we've heard lots of stories about it coming unstuck, right? Yeah, and look, there's a great opportunity bringing family in for what we call economies of scale. If you're trying to buy a holiday home or a rental property or a business, it can be a great way for everyone to go in. But obviously the dynamics can change. People's lifestyles change along the way. They may need to get their money out. There's benefits around pushing money through to different people and stretching the money because somebody probably earns a lower income than the other. So you can manage tax. But like anything with money and family, if it goes wrong, you know you could mm. lose your whole relationships around there so you need to make sure good planning is in place. Mm. Re-entering the workforce after maternity leave uh, can not only be extremely daunting but it also comes with some added financial stresses. Mm. Uh, what tips do you have for parents heading back to work because childcare is such a huge cost these days? Childcare is huge. I talk about a spending and an investment plan. So if you go back and revisit the additional costs you'll have, such as childcare, um, transport costs, all those extra costs, even the cost of buying your suits or whatever it is to go back to work, making sure then you've considered if you've got a repay help debt. But now you should be getting that investment going and what do you do with that? So there's a great one called the catch-up legislation, which is my favourite. Helps you to go back and build up that super in a tax-effective way and rebuild what you didn't do. But if you're struggling right at the start to have suits, there's a great one called Suited for Success that can help you out with suits for about $10 from designers. So don't be daunted. Oh, wow. I love this financial yeah. and fashion advice, uh, Helen. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. This is all, of course, contained in your book. Uh, for more financial advice, Helen's book, On Your Own Two Feet, is available now. It's the essential guide to financial independence for all women. Good stuff.